You dare to record this, you coward. Is it about money? Do you care about money that much? Such petty cash? I'll give it back to you right now. The mother-in-law pushed her husband away, took out $1,700 from the dresser, and threw it at me. Really? Just let me use this petty cash freely. I can't even go to Pachinko because you're working from home. Shouldn't a working adult work outside? Overwhelmed by her force. It was the sister-in-law who subdued the mother-in-law in my stead. I'm so sorry for doubting you. I will take full responsibility for this. I am Emily. I met my husband Tom during college. I still vividly remember him approaching me, saying he fell in love at first sight. I was actually in love with him at first sight too, but I've kept that a secret because I'm shy. I am strongly attracted to his straightforwardness in expressing his feelings. For me, who tends to hold back based on the atmosphere, he was perfect in every way. So, when he proposed to me after we started working, I was truly happy. I eagerly said yes. And that has led us to where we are now. Life with my husband has been harmonious, but there's one thing that bothers me. It's about my mother-in-law. I heard that my husband hardly visited his family home after his father passed away. Therefore, I only saw my mother-in-law a few times a year. However, she got injured a week ago, which led to us living together for a limited time. Emily, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. At first, I thought she was a gentle person, but issues arose shortly after we started living together. Emily, I have something to tell you. That day, when I returned home, the mother-in-law looked solemn. What happened? Well, she told me that she had a debt. Moreover, she had been scammed. You should probably discuss this with Tom. No, no way. Why not? Actually, according to the mother-in-law, she had been scammed in the past and was severely scolded by both her husband and son. Can I ask what the scam was about? I received a phone call from someone claiming to be my son. He said he hit a car with his bicycle and was being charged money. Isn't that? Yes, the it's me scam. But at that time, I was desperate and didn't want to cause any trouble for my husband. I thought it would be better to settle it quietly with money. I see. But how old was Tom when this happened? He was in high school. Can one really mistake the voice of their son whom they see every day? I was just so flustered at that time. I was not just worried about Tom but also thought about the impact on my husband's job. I was restless and couldn't stay put. And regarding this recent incident, I just can't tell Tom because I don't want to burden him. The scam this time. Did they use Tom's name again? Well, not exactly as Tom but, they said, he was having an affair and demanded compensation money. I couldn't even tell you about it. Tom having an affair? That's unlikely. Why can I say that with certainty? Although I don't have concrete evidence, I trust him. He wouldn't do such a thing. He won't cheat. If he ever falls for someone other than me, it would be only if he's truly serious. And he would definitely be open and tell me about it. So, you mean to say that you borrowed money to pay that? Yes, that's right. But I'm not working and could only manage to borrow $3,000. I felt a chill run down my spine at that moment. Mom, where did you borrow that money? I'm sorry to be direct, but I can't believe a bank would lend money to someone unemployed like you. That's right. Is it from loan sharks? That's a bigger issue than the scam itself. You should inform Tom about this right away. Why am I so panicked? It's because my husband is a police officer. If it's discovered that a family member has dealt with loan sharks, Tom's chances of promotion will be gone. All the hard work that my husband put in up to now would go down the drain. It's okay, don't worry. I'm not that foolish. I borrowed from a friend, so it's fine. Oh, I see. 
the mother-in-law may have been scammed, but it seems she thought carefully about where she borrowed the money. So, Mom, the reason you told me this is, um, I'm truly sorry. Could you possibly lend me the money? You see, I'll be getting my pension in two months, so I'll pay you back properly from that. Please, I'll pay it back, so please keep it a secret from Tom, I'm begging you. Seeing the mother-in-law shaking slightly, I couldn't refuse. Honestly, I thought it was foolish. However, her husband was also a police officer. And this was probably the result of her trying her best to think things through. I would never fall for it. But, there are countless people in the world who, like the mother-in-law, have fallen victim to scams. They must be honest people who prioritize helping others. And the mother-in-law is probably one of those kind-hearted people as well. Understood. Let's pay it back in full then. I won't tell Tom about this, but please be more careful in the future, mother-in-law. If you get such calls again, please contact me right away. Emily, thank you so much. But you know, repaying $1,500 this time is enough. What? Well, if I pay back the full amount suddenly, it'll seem like I had the money all along, right? She's someone I'll be associated with in the future, so I want to handle that aspect smoothly. I see. So, Emily, could you give me $1,500 this time? Understood. Even though I said I understood, I didn't really grasp what the mother-in-law meant. Well, if this eliminates the mother-in-law's debt, there shouldn't be any problem. At that time, out of consideration for the mother-in-law's feelings, I didn't tell my husband, thinking the issue was resolved. After some time since our private discussion, my company started recommending remote work, and I became a full-time remote worker. However, this change in daily life revealed the mother-in-law's true nature. Emily, are you off work today? No. I've started working from home as of today. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, I hate being this sensitive to people's expressions at times like this. Oh, don't worry, Mom. I'll be working in my room, and I'll prepare my own lunch. Please go about your day as you normally would. Okay, thank you. I try my best to be considerate, but the mother-in-law still looked troubled. Well, if a daughter-in-law is at home all day when she's used to being alone, it's bound to be uncomfortable. However, I'm always busy, and during the day, I don't leave my room except for meals and bathroom breaks. So, I thought the mother-in-law would get used to this situation over time. After all, this is just a temporary situation until the mother-in-law's butt heals. Then, when my lunch break came, I headed downstairs to go to the convenience store. Mom, I'm going to the convenience store. Do you want anything? Oh, long time no see. When I opened the living room door, the sister-in-law was there. I'm heading to the convenience store. Do you want me to get anything for you? No, I'm good. I see. Mom, is there anything you'd like? Um, could you get me a hot coffee? Understood. I met my sister-in-law for the first time in several months. On my way to the convenience store, I idly thought that it's so lovely how close she is with her mother coming to see her because she's worried about her injury. However, since then, the sister-in-law has been visiting almost every day. If she can check on her mother every day, isn't there no need for us to live together? Even temporarily. Even though she injured her foot, the mother-in-law can manage on her own. Is there even a point in us living together? Hey, about your sister. That day, I told my husband about her. What? She's been coming here every day. Yes, she has. Then there's no point in us moving in, right? You think so too. I do. Mom seems to be doing pretty well, all things considered. That's what I thought. And ever since I started working remotely, it seems like she's never really at ease. Oh, it's not like she's done anything bad or anything. But this is her house, and I feel bad making her feel uneasy. 
So I've been going to the convenience store every lunchtime as a small gesture. And when I go, I always ask if she or anyone else wants anything. Wait, are you getting paid for it? What? No, I'm not. You should charge her. We keep separate finances, after all. But... I couldn't continue. The mother-in-law is repaying a debt. I can't take money from her in such a situation. As I fell silent, my husband went to the mother-in-law's room. Mom. What? You scared me. Stop taking advantage of Emily. What are you talking about? I shook my head vigorously at my mother-in-law from behind my husband. If you're asking for groceries, please pay properly. Well, I go to the convenience store on my own initiative. Emily, it's not good to let things like this slide. Let's set clear boundaries on these matters. You understand too, right mom? I get it. By the way, I heard she's been coming here every day. Oh, no, it seems like I snitched to my husband. I love my husband's straightforward nature, but I wish he'd consider how I feel. Seeing her every day. If she can come here every day, then there's no point in us living here, right? She just pops by for a bit and then leaves immediately. That's not true. I can hear their laughter through the walls all the way in my room. Anyway, if she's around, we need to discuss things. Let's talk about our future plans this weekend. The next day, I found myself under fire from both my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. During my lunch break, my sister-in-law approached me. I need to talk to you. Yes. You buy lunch at the convenience store every day, right? Yes, I do. That's just not acceptable. Stop it right now. Since mom can't say it, I will. That money belongs to mom, right? Taking money from her is like bullying your mother-in-law. You're such a terrible daughter-in-law. Excuse me? I was showered with words I couldn't have imagined. This money belongs to my mother-in-law. Bullying my mother-in-law. What on earth is she talking about? Um, all the money spent on me is paid for with the money I've earned. What are you talking about? Aren't you always shut up in your room, being a NET? What? That's not true at all. What kind of nonsense are you coming up with now? I work full time. My job is something I can do with just a laptop. So I've become a remote worker. Huh. Wait a moment. I went upstairs to get my laptop, came back down, and showed her the screen. This system is used to confirm attendance, and as you can see, it says I'm currently away from the desk. I am genuinely working. My sister-in-law stared intently at the laptop screen. Mom? What's going on? No, that's what I want to know. Enough is enough. How dare you lie to this extent? Don't involve my daughter in this. Huh. I'm going to say it clearly today. I've had it with you. If you're a neat, get out of this house right now. I'll consider the money I lent you as tuition. You probably won't be able to repay it anyway. Huh? I'm the one who lent the money. Wait, what's going on? Didn't you get scammed? Ah, I see now. At this moment, I realized I was deceived by my mother-in-law. I understand. I'll leave. I've learned a lot from this experience. I'll be moving out over the weekend, so I'll need to stay for about three more days. I'll be secluded and working the entire time, so we won't cross paths. Now, my lunch break is over, so I'll excuse myself. After this, I lived without seeing my mother-in-law until I moved out. Or rather, it must have been awkward for her. She avoided me too. I only told my husband that we'd be moving. He was concerned about the reason, but he accepted it when I said I'd explain everything once it was all over. On the day of the move, my mother-in-law stayed locked in her room and didn't come out. In the midst of this, we quietly proceeded with the moving preparations. After we finished loading our things, just when we were about to head back to our own home, the sister-in-law appeared. I've been worried about this. Did I end up being rude to you? Were you involved in this? 
Can I also hear the reason now? Well, it's fine now. Since we've finished loading our things. I was silent because I feared retaliation. But there's no problem talking about it now. I told the two of them the truth plainly. You're kidding, right? I heard the exact same story from mom. But the victim was you, Emily. I figured. I heard that mom was scammed twice. But Tom asked me to keep it a secret. And I felt sympathetic to mom. Which I now realize wasn't right. How much money did you give her? $1,500. I was planning to give her another $1,500 next month. Could it be? The sister-in-law quickly headed to the mother-in-law's room and opened the sliding door. Mom, are you still gambling on Pachinko? What are you talking about all of a sudden? I'm not. Then what about the money you borrowed from Emily? You were helping her out because she got scammed, right? Did I say something like that? I've been very forgetful lately. I don't remember a lot of things. I wonder if I should see a doctor. Tom and the sister-in-law were giving their mother cold looks. Mom, you borrowed money from me, remember? Did I? I don't recall. Maybe I am sick after all. Look, I saw it on TV the other day. It's called multiple personality disorder. I see. Well, maybe this will jog your memory. I took out my smartphone. What's that? This has our conversation recorded on it from that time. $1,500 is a lot of money for me. So I recorded our conversation just to be safe. To help you remember, I'll play it now. Before I could finish speaking, the mother-in-law leaped dramatically towards my smartphone. Her appearance was no longer human. She looked like a sharp-eyed monster. But before she could reach my phone, Tom restrained her. It's to be expected from a police officer. His reflexes were quick. Recording me, you sneaky money. Is money that important to you? Such a trivial amount. I'll pay it back right now. As she shook off Tom, the mother-in-law pulled $1,500 from a chest and threw it at me. Come on, let me spend such a small amount freely. I can't even go to the pachinko because you've been working from home. Shouldn't working adults be outside? In my astonishment, it was the sister-in-law who pinned down the mother-in-law in my stead. Emily, I'm truly sorry for doubting you. I'll make sure to settle this properly. Wah, huh? Before I could respond, the sister-in-law took action. Hey, old hag, who told you to scatter the money you borrowed? What happened to the reserved sister-in-law I knew? I couldn't hide my surprise and looked at Tom. After dad passed away, she's been the boss in this house. Wait, what does that even mean? Pick up every bill and hand it over properly. Idiot. Under the sister-in-law's pressure, the mother-in-law, trembling, picked up the scattered bills. Count to make sure all 15 bills are there. Yes, they are all here. The sister-in-law roughly took the money from the mother-in-law. Big sis, I made sure to collect everything. Big sis. I deeply apologize for this incident. I'll ensure this doesn't happen again by properly disciplining her. In the end, Tom and I haven't seen the mother-in-law since then. From time to time, I receive updates about the mother-in-law from the sister-in-law. She told us that thanks to the sister-in-law's strict discipline, the mother-in-law started working part-time. The sister-in-law's family moved into that house and is still keeping an eye on everything there. Was your sister, you know, a former leader of some girl gang. When our lives settled down, I posed the question to Tom. Nope, she wasn't. I see. She called me big sis, so I thought maybe she was. That's just her way of showing that she likes you. I see. I'm glad that my misunderstanding about your sister got cleared up. She just doesn't like dishonesty. She actually wanted to become a police officer like dad and me. But she had an eye injury from an accident when she was little. That's why she couldn't become a cop. I see. But now she might have found her calling in rehabilitating people, don't you think? Speaking of which, reflect on your actions this time. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Keeping secrets between spouses is not good. If you had talked to me properly about this, it wouldn't have come to this. Yes, I'm sorry. But still, you are smart, Emily. You did record the conversation, right? About that, I didn't. So, if your mother denied everything, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. Well, that was a big gamble. Yay. It was good this time since the mother-in-law got caught in the act. No more secrets between us as a couple. I vow to consult Tom on everything from now on.